get off the freaking net. And welcome to the Blazon Nation. Where the world wide web and real life world collide. And brings current events to you, then takes it all into debate. With your hosts from the depths. The Thing. And JBJ Blaze. And welcome back to the Blazon Nation. This is episode 19 on December the 23rd, 2014, I believe it is. And welcome back. Even though I'm pretty sure I said that already. But how's things been with you without getting into too much detail? Mr. I think it's been going well. December spirit has descended upon us as it does every year. I got all my Christmas shopping done. So I'm going to have some nice Christmas Eve dinner and with family and relatives. Christmas Day is going to be in the morning at my mom's house, open presents, and then I'm going to head over to my dad's for Christmas brunch. And as always, in the month of December, happy holidays to everybody. And I wish you all the best. Well, and as for me, I've just been trying to get busy with getting some videos released, including the resuming of my text-based game at day's end which was formerly called Aftermath, so hopefully I'll be getting that up tonight, if not tomorrow, as well as probably a couple other videos, either tonight or tomorrow, despite whatever my blazy logs say, of which way I do believe I have a notepad for the next segment. Yes, I do. And so, um... I forget how I'm supposed to, how we're supposed to do this intro segment. Oh, actually, let's go with this. So we did originally record the 19th episode last month, which was during the Thanksgiving Day weekend. Unfortunately, the audio glitches still recurred, even after I believe it was maybe episode 17 that the audio glitches first came up. 16 or 17, but what I finally figured out was through editing at day's end, I had still quite a few audio glitches here and there, and I did not even use Skype. Now, whether it's because Skype is running or not, I guess we'll find that out after this episode tonight, which hopefully nothing bad happens to the audio. But when I tried OBS for any recording whatsoever, no audio glitches, period. So I am currently making this switch to OBS. I would have loved to go for FF split, but for some reason, just about a minute in or so, the RTMP channel thing just drops it right away. And, uh, yeah, so that's why we're still not on FF Split quite yet. But anyway, shall we get to our next segment? We shall. All right. Sidewalk talk. Talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk. Yeah. All right, so let's first start off with you, Mr. Thing. How's your maybe actually two months been? Well, I had a wonderful Thanksgiving. There was a lot of food, and I really, really enjoyed it. Last week on Thursday, we at my workplace, we had a nice um, meal. Well, because reason being is because I was only working two days this week. And I kind of fooled myself up a little bit, so I didn't feel as well as I did before. But I'm glad I had a lot of food. Um, this Christmas is going to be great. I'm going to be upgrading to a new PC just to be able to store a lot more and play my games. Also, upgrade my you uh, do my YouTube channel more often because every single bit of that helps. 
and I've been doing a lot of Christmas shopping, and yeah, I pretty much just said everything that I did say in the beginning of the podcast, and that's pretty much what has been going on throughout the end of November and the last week of December. All right. What about oh. you? For me, so last month we had a couple trade shows. One was a gun show, and the second was a fishing show. And at the first one, we got to go to a dinner in which Mr. Grenville Pinto, who is a violinist from Toronto, he performed there, and I got him to perform Bleed It Out, so... That is actually one of the videos I will be uploading soon, but it's Facebook exclusive because it was a private thing going on, so probably not the best to put it on YouTube. Although I will be putting up, I have a couple videos from a school-wide thing going on, so it wasn't just our school, it was also a couple public schools and maybe one or so I, I'm not sure if there were any high schools there but we got to have a live Skype chat I guess it would be live but we had a good chat well interview with Mr. Chris Hadfield so I'll be uploading that soon hopefully tomorrow and yeah and that'll definitely be for YouTube since it's a public gig, and, well, at least public enough. But in other things, I am currently finally relieved of most of my schoolwork, because it's Christmas holidays, but I am hoping to find some time to resume work on this physics program for one of my teachers, which is for my computer science class. Which is also where I gained enough knowledge of Java, of the Java programming language to be able to resume development of my game Aftermath now at day's end. I've recently tried to do a stream for resuming my novel The Cataholic, which is about a guy who one night gets drunk at a bar, and I'm not sure whether I'm going to have him be in his own drunk driving incident, a car crash, but only involving him, or whether just a bar fight, and then later on, uh, the court decides to prohibit him from all alcoholic beverages, which is, of course, where the obviously fictional portion comes in. Thing, and I guess, of course, it's... Oh, it's all fictional, but that's where it gets quite obvious that this couldn't actually happen. But, so hopefully I can get something figured out for that. And as for stuff with computers, I am hoping to get a new 2TB hard drive for Christmas. Unfortunately, like last year, I kind of procrastinated w with my wish list, so I'm not sure if I'm going to actually be able to get that. Maybe I might get Scrolls, though, which is Mojang's second game, and I hope to God that shower noise does not come through. Last time it did, whenever, whichever that last time was, I think it was actually just doing a test recording though but um what else has there been oh that's why I have my notes made up so <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday evening I got to go for my final G1 lesson as well as the practice test for my upcoming G2 test which I'll hopefully be calling that in soon, and getting my G2 license, which in... Do, do you have the levels of G licenses in America? 
I have no clue what you are talking about. Okay. <laughs> so, in Canada, G1, for those who don't know, basically... Basically, what mo what it mostly restricts is you cannot drive at very late night, and you cannot drive without being accompanied in, and there, oh. and them being in the passenger seat, a person who's had at least four years of experience as a full G licensed driver. Then G two, I think there's still that I got it. dusk restriction, but. You can drive on your own. Yeah, I now I know what you're talking about. All right. But yeah, so I've gotten most of my things back on the roll. Still a, still a bit retarding in the process, though, because my computer's just not that very high in specifications. H high in performance, I'll say. And so I'm hoping to do some upgrades this Christmas, especially since my oldest brother has offered me his older graphics card, which is supposed to be a one gigabyte. So yeah, hopefully that turns out well. And like I said before, we've been pretty much two months off of the podcast because the original version of this had a load of audio glitches. And again, thank you, Mr. Brent Copeland, for your help that I've asked of on your morning coffee show, because now we should be safe from all tss and ooh and all that jazz, even <laughs> though that might be more like dubstep to somebody else. But anyway, let's get going to... Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. I thought that was such a good segue. I think I've proven <laughs> myself incorrect. So, okay, you are in the dock, good. So, <laughs> <laughs> why would I not be? I don't know, but I, I was going to make a comment about you're not on top of things, but then again, mm -hmm. and then... Oh, wait, but then again, we did have to wait about <laughs> 10 or, uh, yeah, about 10 minutes for you to be available. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I was no wrapping, worries. I was wrapping presents. <laughs> yeah. So. Trying to get a response out of me. <laughs> yeah. Go. So the first, actually, you can do the first two, and then I'll do the last one. All right, so before I begin, we want to apologize in case that these articles are too old because we've had a delay with the audio glitches and such as. So we apologize for that. Anyway, so the first article is entitled Nearly 5 Million Undocumented Immigrants Benefit from President Obama's Executive Action. So basically they're saying that there are these people who are trying to move to this country that are undocumented, so we don't know any history about them. And some people think that this is a big deal and it should not be done because it is dangerous and it's basically letting bad people into this country. Possibly. Not everyone is bad, but there's always a risk when it comes to situations like this. And the next article is entitled Bill Cos... Ex-NBC employee Frank Scotty claims Bill Cosby paid off women and invited young models to his dressing room as he stood guard. This was submitted uh, November 23rd, and I guess this gentleman has made a whole bunch of claims against Cosby and all this publicity about him. It's just, it's making him try to be bad, but like I said, you have to have all the proof before you start accusing somebody of something. And to recently update of what's happening now, it's just let's just say he's not getting any support from um, African American people. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's totally bad. And there's 
continuously there are more um what's the word for it the number accusations yeah the number of number accusations of... is yeah. gradually increasing but so All far right. we've also had bill cosby's next wife one is an article is that is hilarious. entitled oh the no no I'm, do I'm doing these next oh. ones all right, you go then. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and then these last ones, which actually even tie into recent events still. We have the Inconvenient and Tragic Truths, which that is probably the best thing that I ever was able to find on the Ferguson shooting. And then a video timeline of two of the two accounts that occurred so the one account being that which would indict Darren Wilson and then the other account which was of the police which would go to say that Darren Wilson is innocent and Michael Brown tried to inflict force upon Darren Wilson during that conflict. And then the final one, and this was Black Friday, and it's still going on. Uh, a bunch of protests and rioting going on with the protesters, and it's not even just Ferguson now. It's regarding all the cases, and even most recently, we've had this black guy whose name I I think it's something like Ismail or whatever and he made a call out which regarded the whole thing of I guess cops should die or whatever and those nine yards and murdered I believe it was the two cops who were involved in the killing of Eric Garner and one other person who's been involved in these yeah. recurring incidents. And then, of course, we're leaving it for the end, but, and I'll be editing this out, but the listener megaphone. So, let's get the show on the road, shall we? Yep. If I. I gotta remember, I'm using Winamp now for the bumpers, because OBS does not support media files such as MP3s. Anyway... Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? Alright, so... Let's dig down first into why... Not why. Let's not get too opinionated yet. Um... <laughs> How do I put this? So first let's get digging down into what's been going on with these undocumented immigrants. And first may I say that when we were driving home from, I believe it was the fishing show about a month ago that I mentioned earlier on... There was actually this radio show going on in which their topic was the 5 billion undocumented immigrants and one of the caller inners had been in support of Obama's decision basically of what's he supposed to do and I mean his whole tone during mm -hmm. his call in it just sounded I'm not sure exactly how to phrase it, but sort of like, I don't know. I mean, he didn't sound like he was even knowing what he was talking about. He sounded like he just didn't really know much about the topic and was just trying to spew a bunch of things that were probably just maybe a bit loaded with emotion but of course that could be saying it wrong too what do you find about this well 
as we all know, executive actions are not really new when it comes to being the president and all that. And I believe that Obama sees this as more positive than negative. So he, when Congress can't get when when they can't get through a bill and the bill can't get to the person's desk, if Congress just can't work together things out, then he is tr he's trying to make it pass so he doesn't have to wait all the time. I mean, time to some people is really essential. And the reason why time is essential is because when time is just wasted away and nothing gets done, then nothing moves forward. So in this case like the Deferred Action for a Childhood Arrival program, which basically allowed uh, work permits and protection from deportation for immigrants under the age of 31 who are children who came here and makes them able to live and work, except they have to remove their or renew their permit for two years, every two years. It's I guess it's just a... It's more of a political thing than than anything else, but I I guess you have to find a balance. If if something outweighs the negatives than the positives, I guess in a way it's okay, but sometimes a choice to do something is better than having no choice at all. If you're forced to make a choice, it's probably worse than actually choosing from your own perspective and I really hope that this doesn't make the world a, a more dangerous place than than ever but like I said decisions have to be made things have to go forward and despite the risks and drawbacks I do believe that there is a way to make this a better place to be to work and to connect with others that's all I gotta say I think in a way it differs from your previous comments from the original airing but um, so when you look into this a bit deeper so immigrants being the people that are coming into the country and undocumented so that means that no criminal records basically nothing negative on these people will be recorded anywhere yeah or that if it is recorded anywhere that it's even being considered so what I'm finding about this myself is it could potentially lead into, and I mean, with what's been going on now with Congress, yes, there could be just a lot of topsy-turvy stuff, and the whole balancing the positives and negatives, but then when you, when things go on later, I think the negatives really become more obvious mm -hmm. because these people you really don't get to have much a clue about whether they're going to pull something crappy or not in the country and of course you have nothing to say about it. Unless maybe, oh, they're one of the people who are undocumented, so maybe we can take extra action against them. But, I think We this... won't have a clue. Yeah. I, I just think this is... And, and, I mean, Obama's made a lot of lousy decisions, and he said many lousy speeches... For example, the drone strikes, trying to make that sound like it was maybe either just simply a good thing 
or a justified act, or the only way to do it, or whether just about anything else that I've seen him talk about, even especially when he's sucking up to the people, kissing up to the people that who um, were related to those victims of, for example, the Sandy Hook shooting with his whole gun control crap, when what really should have been done is, of course, the mental health uh, facilities being more available and everything. So, basically, more funding for the mental health facilities and making sure that people get the help they need for that, and especially in the case of Elliot Roger, who got denied for it, but... I mean... This is... I, I'm not sure what could be worse. His decision that it's justified to murder over 7,000 innocent Pakistanis over maybe just a few terrorists, or allowing 5 million undocumented people into America, and you know nothing about them, and heaven knows whether some of them are terrorists, criminals, or what have you, or even just simply radicals, for goodness sake. I'm just really hoping that whatever does happen, it's not something that's going to totally screw over people. Because that would just be a very unfortunate day, and a day that should not have happened. And it's because, at least partially, this decision to allow them into the country without anything to say about them. Or to prove that they are innocent of anything. Yeah. But I guess let's get to the next thing, which is even more um, recent. Well, not recent. It's still been going on. We've mm -hmm. had still all these allegations going on against Bill Cosby. We've had his silence, we've had his wife speak out saying that basically she knows him for what he is and she loves him still very much, no matter what the allegations say about him. And then there's also been his daughters who've also spoken out against the allegations and even uh, Whoopi Goldberg and this other lady. But we're still getting waves of women coming out to say that he drugged and raped them. Or at least the raped part. And we're having networks drop him. Or at least shows being cancelled of his mm -hmm. as well as performances and everything what do you have to say about this well um, I've known Bill Cosby as being parodied most of the time also I've known him for his comedy uh, skits when he's up in the chair talking to the audience he really really made me laugh. I like the way he he exerts his comical energy. But this whole debacle about this ex-employee claiming he did this, the thing is, why did he wait so long just to mention this accusation? I mean, if he knew that it was wrong, he would have done it immediately. So either he completely just ignored what he wanted to do during the time, or he had some sort of an agreement 
that I don't know, there's some sort of a conspiracy theory or like private contacts not to tell anyone about this. It's as if that that person is helping their career or what they're doing, but they don't want to they don't want them to look bad because they're afraid that they might lose a very important asset. You shouldn't if something you suspect is wrong and inhumane and morally unacceptable to you about some person that you're working with or doing stuff with, why can't you just let the word out and don't keep it hidden for so long? I mean, it doesn't really make sense. I know people have secrets, but when it comes to stuff like this, paying off women, inviting young models to a dressing room, why couldn't he say that at the time that was more than 20 years ago? I just I just don't understand. I really don't. And that's the thing I've noticed too. And I've said a, a lot of times I'm not a psychologist, but I would not expect it to take more than and I mean with Sons of Guns, Will Hayden got removed from well the whole show got canceled, but Will Hayden also got removed from the company Red Jacket. But the allegations claiming that he molested, I believe it was his granddaughter and maybe even his daughter, these did not take more than a year to come up. I believe they were only about nine or so months. If if even that long. I actually no, I think they were more maybe just about a quarter of a year is all it took for his granddaughter to speak out and say that he stole her of her stole her virginity from her and molesting her. But when it comes to cases like these allegations against Cosby, they didn't take within a year. They did not take within even two years. They took more... They took more years than I've even been alive for. Yeah. They, these things have happened in the 70s and 80s, and now you're bringing it up? Uh, I have read something about that there were al that there was an allegation made in about oh three or oh four or somewhere around those years which got said which that lawsuit was settled but why and and I think about I I got a feeling that a lot of these newer allegations are just coming out because while well, there's all these other women's allegations so maybe I could get some money out of this too and of course I'm not saying that they're incorrect I am well if anything if if what they say is true it's incorrect to keep this hidden for decades and then finally speak out about it and even Whoopi Goldberg mentioned something about a rape kit that usually you'd get after finding out you've been raped. Of course, I don't really know much about rape kits myself. And I'm not sure if I'll ever need to or should ever need to know about rape kits. But... And then I look back on what went on with Michael Jackson and the the molestation claim against him that seemed to be the biggest ended up after his death. The kid who made the allegation admitted it was only for the money. And what I'm wondering is maybe when Bill Cosby is finally destroyed from his from his career if someone's going to say oh yeah and I only did that for the money or or if he's going to end up dead like 
Michael Jackson, and oh yeah, we only did it for the money. Wow, look at what's gone on. You've put this person through a bunch of criticism over something <laughs> that they never did, and something that's apparently only for the money, so out of your own selfishness and greed, and, and I mean, a part of me wonders if there's even some thing there that's a racial issue. And we're gonna be getting more into that in the next topic, but what I'm wondering if there's maybe a potential racial issue, even despite there being one black woman that did come out to say that she was also raped by Cosby, but I think there's only been one black woman out of, I believe, the rest being white woman. And they're all up against a black man. And th th that's where I draw the similarities between the two. They're black, rich, and I... I finally remembered this one day that, and I think this was walking home from school, that, oh yeah, that's, and this might have even been on Friday before the break, and I thought, that's what the third one was, and I can't remember it again, whether it was maybe just the length of time it took for the claims to come to light, but... And if these things are true, then... And I suppose that's where the other line comes in, is... Yeah. Whether or not the claims are true, either way, someone's going to be destroyed. It's either going to be... Cosby's career completely, or it's going to be these woman's careers completely because I won't be surprised if the whole world despises them or despises what they did I should say that sounds a bit too harsh but then again their claims are harsh yeah and you're gonna put someone through all that criticism over something that and so far it's only Cosby, not sure whether if his wife would know. Of course, not to discredit her if she does know. But so far, as far as I would think, Bill Cosby and these 20 plus women are the only ones who know whether these allegations are true. Yep. And to think that someone here is lying their butt off. Whether it's these ladies to get fame, to get fortune, or whether it's Cosby for something that he did in fact do years ago, which was absolutely a disgusting thing to do. Yeah. But of course, I cannot necessarily... And and, uh, and a bunch of people are already labeling him as a rapist. And it absolutely bugs me. It's... For, for example, the Justin Carter comment, do you remember that? He had right. made a Facebook comment um, about... in which he was sarcastically... What it was, was he was playing League of Legends with somebody over the Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And it got, got called a terrorist threat. And only then, after their investigation, did they find out that there was no terroristic intent. Mm -hmm. That only until he was sentenced that he ended up on Suicide Watch was there ever an issue with his mentality yeah. or possible terroristic thoughts. And I hope to glory terroristic is a real word. I think it is, though. And then... 
I think possibly in the case, and this is our next topic, but all the protests and everything going on in the U.S. that are... I mean, with the whole labeling of all cops as scumbags. Obviously, not every single one of them is a scumbag. There are the few oh. out there that break the rules, but yeah. not everyone's a scumbag here. Mm -hmm. There are those who play by the rules. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I can still remember back to this uh, after prom party that I had went to. And one of the people that came who was probably not invited. And uh, he came up with, oh, police are always giving me yes. And uh, that seemed to annoy the police officers. And I'm just thinking, there is a reason why they're giving you crap, which is because you're starting crap. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But, well, and you said that that you were already uh, spoken out for this. Or... Yeah, I, it's just, I really, I don't understand why people put race into when it comes to crimes and just all the stereotypical things that are, that are happening. It's, it's just a shame. And. And now you have the protests that are going on in New York City about protesters saying, what do you want, dead cops? What do you want? When do you want them now? It's, it's such a shame, really. It, they're taking a simple thing that should not be race-based, but they are treating oh, wait, it like we're that. Still, we're still on the Cosby issue. <laughs> oh, we are? Well, yeah. you just kind of jumped Sorry, into I, that. I... Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, because I thought, I thought I told my opinion on Cosby, and then you said that, and then you jumped into the next one. Yeah, admittedly so. But j just the whole labeling with the... And, I mean, it, it is potentially a racial issue, in my opinion. Just like our next topic is most absolutely a racial issue. It's a racial issue to the people who make it a racial issue. Exactly. I, I see it as a well a result where if you want to steal from a shop, you're gonna get you're gonna get told on by the police, and if you don't comply, bad stuff is going to happen that you're not going to like. And apparently, Michael Brown did not see this, and at the time he was under. They found marijuana system. I don't know if that altered his mind in any way, but this resulted in so much media that it resulted in um, Darren Wilson retiring from the police force because everywhere there are people holding up signs that says, Ferguson is everywhere. Police brutality and murder must stop. It's just people treat this thing as a race thing when it should not be treated as a race thing at all. I mean, it it's just people are animals when it comes to these when it comes to these situations. The recent event is when there was there was a cop that was sorry not a cop there was there was a there was a black man who was trying to sell cigarettes illegally and obviously there's a label on the box that says not available for individual retail sale and he was not complying with police and the police had to put him in a chokehold because he wasn't complying and he was struggling he was very very aggressive and he was going to hurt somebody and this resulted in the black man having a cardiac going into cardiac arrest and he ended up dying and now the streets are flooded with people who who are thinking that that these that cops are are out of control in the city and they should be stopped. And, and I don't understand. There's a person who is trying to do their job as an officer through several years of training and then you have people who see who don't ever see what it's like to be in their shoes and they would rather cry and complain 
and make it a race issue as opposed to just looking at the issue in general. They just they label things like there's no tomorrow. They don't have time to to think and respond to how the situation could be looked at, at differently and they just go what's on their fixed mindset and they stick with it and that's kind of disappointing to me but that's what I believe how some people think in certain situations like this. I'm done. Oh. Yeah, you finished up too soon. Ah, uh, crap. Now what was I going to say? But yeah, and go going back to the thing with Cosby, I'm honestly further on Bill Cosby's side of the issue with that these allegations are untrue but honestly I prefer to I'm gonna just wait to see what does actually come up because heaven knows and and apparently they are finally doing an investigation into it now and I, I gotta wonder why they've waited so long to do the investigation I mean you're getting all these allegations and you haven't done the investigation yet at least you haven't announced that there's an investigation going on yet. Yeah. But I just hope something works out the way it's supposed to be. That they do consider the evidence, which so far there is absolutely, I believe, probably nil of. That proves the sexual assault allegations. And just that justice is is served the right way. And if yeah. anything, if it is proven that these allegations are untrue, I will not be surprised if there is a defamation lawsuit filed. And otherwise, yeah. of course, if otherwise happens, then that Cosby is incarcerated for good. But... Of course, that's so far not where I am on the whole spectrum of who's right and wrong. But, g going into the next topic, I, I definitely, with what I said about it's absolutely a racial issue, it really is. And I forget if you mentioned anything much about it already, but you have either the racial issue that black that white cops like to kill black people or something or abuse their powers or whatever there's that racial issue but then there's the racial issue on the other side of things with that just because every single one of these cases involves a white cop up against a black person, a black civilian, or let alone that it just simply involves a cop killing the person that the cop's automatically in the wrong. Either just because they're a cop, or just because they're white. But, and, and like you say, with what evidence there is, in the case of Ferguson, the guy... Michael Brown was shoplifting, and he did not comply with orders, so apprehension was applied. Yeah. And even more force was gone against, and even more force was exerted against the officer, so the officer has a bloody right to enforce back, or to exert force back against the individual yeah if, if his life feels threatened in any way toward the person that he's trying to talk down then he has the right to use that force if he has to defend himself because that's what darren wilson had to do when he got already got punched twice and if he got punched a third time he said that would have knocked me out for sure that's why i did something and even thinking back to, for example, my law teacher at school, he's talked about that he had to use um, physical force against students to get them to stop from fighting. 
And even this one time, I guess, this girl had come to school intoxicated and tried starting crap. And, uh, they ended up getting the police. I, I, I think it was a girl who got the police. Only for, uh, the police to, the officer to let me, to let the, my teacher know that he was fully within his right. And he was within his right. Because there, even in Canada, in section, I believe it is 43, you have a right to use physical force against a person in terms of correction. Of course, this isn't quite so much for correctional purposes, but it's for saving your life purposes from potentially having this person take away your life when you're just doing your job. Yeah. And it, even... Uh... And even in cases, for, for example, the Eric Garner one, that mm -hmm. guy is just huge. Huge he yeah. was. And when you're going to have such a huge guy try to use physical force against you, I will, I'm not too surprised if it does put someone in a bit of fear. And if you look at the video, the size comparison, I mean, Eric Garner could have easily probably tackled that cop, but nope, it happens vice versa. But it yeah, happens... And... No, you go ahead. Oh, well, I mean, he, he, he didn't look like that he was in great shape. He looked, he looked overweight, and just saying that People who are overweight and obese aren't usually in the healthiest state of being, and maybe that's what caused it, or he had some sort of uh, biological problem with with one of his organs, and things just went the way they did. But if people just learn to comply with 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 the law, then there won't be all of these issues that are happening, such as protests about dead cops. It's just, it, it, it disappoints me to a very high degree. But yeah, and in the case of the, of Eric Garner, I originally thought that the police officer was the one who was in the wrong, only to find out, no, it was not. It was Eric Garner retaliating and who did break the law for... It was shoplifting, right? No, that was that was Michael Brown. And oh. then uh now Eric Gardner, I think he was the one who was trying to sell cigarettes. Oh uh, yeah, on the street. yeah. Okay, yeah. so it was just um street drug stealing. And then But the funny thing is how I determined that Eric Garner was innocent was because of the media. So, I can consider Does, myself a victim of the media bias. See what the media does to your minds? Yeah. It makes you, it makes you think completely different. You start, and I believe that you start developing, you first start out as, an un, as unconscious because you're so old, or so, so young, sorry. And then once you get around seven or seven or eight years old, you start to develop self-awareness and you start asking a lot of questions about who are you, how did I get here, what time is it, the, the social stuff. But the more you're exposed to this media and the more you're exposed to people who influence you to, to stay with these ideas, the more it gets ingrained into, your, into you to the point where it's unconscious and it's second nature. And that pretty much applies with every single experience out there uh, for now. It, it's, that's, that's reality. And I think the media, TV shows, and movies have more influence on people than others might think. 
And what I also find bothers me is for some reason in cases like these, and even a while back I made a blog post, a textual one on the Blaze on Asian blog about this uh, news, about this case on the news, which involved two men stabbing a gay person, and they, for some reason, had to bring in, but we're not sure if it's a hate crime or not yet, or yet or not, and that really struck me with surprise, because why bother coming up with the whole hate crime thing? I, I don't know. It the, just, it doesn't make sense to to automatically assume that's a hate crime. You're just, you're going with something that is, basically, my brother told me one thing. It's easier to complain, condemn, and criticize others or situations than to listen deeply, um, show people compassion, and understanding what they feel. Because it's a lot easier. And I think people just have this mindset that automatically goes to just being that like this is offensive, this is a hate crime, and you say, well, how about you look at it a little differently, and what if this, what if gender wasn't applied, what if race wasn't applied? People don't think about that stuff because they just don't have time. They would rather they ra they react faster than what their mind can process, and the more that's done to that person the more it's going to happen in the future and even just with that it could have happened for some other reason maybe it was to do with drugs or maybe someone cheated on somebody else or something there could be another reason for that this gay man was stabbed, not even for the fact that he was gay. Yeah, it, people just, and, they label stuff. And with the whole of... hate crime thing, I mean, what's the point of bringing that in there when just incarcerate these two buggers and you'll have them off the streets and you'll have people safer? including this man who was stabbed by them. It's a wrong thing to happen, but it's even... It's still wrong. Continued to... bring up... to automatically label it as a hate crime. I mean, you don't see the whole Luca Magnotic case labeled as a hate crime. You see it as... Luca Magnata is absolutely messed up in the mind to dismember Jim Lin's body. Yeah, it it it's you remember the the case that O.J. Simpson was in when they found out that he was not guilty of his crime. You know, the whole if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Well, what happened after that? We didn't see any white people riot in the streets looting stuff. Maybe only a small proportion of those people did that, but there was nobody who was rioting. And when it happens to a black person, then all of a sudden there are these riots. It it just it doesn't make sense. And and I'm not saying that that black people are worse than white people. We just have to look at it as a whole without the race, without the gender, without sexual preference. It's all of these characteristics that we use as labels when it comes to these certain conditions and crimes that are happening around the world today. And and with that, the crap, I got to get my train of thought back. So you were talking about the whole, oh yeah, and even, and with the riots and everything and looting and scaring away people on Black Friday, it's one thing to, ex to exercise your opinion, whether it's correct or not, 
whether it's got its facts to back it up or not. But it's a whole nother thing to attack people, to, in Ismail's case, to murder two cops. It's wrong to burn stores. It's wrong to vandalize. It, even in the case of going back to the Bill Cosby thing, it's absolutely wrong to have grief to have graffiti to have graffitied his star on the Hollywood sidewalk because they scribbled rapist, rapist, rapist all over it. Right, but but the thing is, is that you have rights and wrongs, which are moral values. If you were to put aside the moral values and just look at it as in general, all the things that you said that you say are wrong are just crimes. That's it. They are crimes. And when it comes to morals, doing something that's wrong as opposed to doing something that feels right could be completely different. But in general, it's just we just look at it as a crime. There are too many things that are happening in this world, and we basically put these labels on top of what is supposed to be just a generic crime scene because it's a lot easier to criticize, condemn, and complain about those things as opposed to just trying to understand why this happened and how it happened. But they just jump to conclusions because they don't have the the, pro, the power or the mindset to think about the situation and how it's different as opposed to what they think it is originally. Yeah, and it, it's just... And I forget if I did post this on Twitter, but they're, they're the... Rioters, they're just total animals. They are. They're animals, exactly. I mean, again, it's one thing to exercise what you believe of something, whether right or not. But it's totally acting like a freaking animal to take it out on others who may not even have anything to do with it. And yeah. most likely, they don't. But and you still violate their rights to be safe from the crap you're pulling off against them. And sometimes you're protesting about somebody who ended up dying that's pretty much the same race as you, but you never personally know who that person is or was or was going to be or any of the things that he or she has done in their lifetime. You just find someone who's protesting their mind, and then you tend to follow that person if you think it is the right thing to do. But people have different moral values, and some see it as wrong. And I think that's just the thing, though. Is yeah. Yes, it's sometimes definitely not a bad thing to listen to what others say. But of course, you want to have your own facts. Yes. You want to check it out for yourself. But people don't have time for that. Wrong. They don't have time to go over the facts or think how the situation could have been done differently. They just do what their mind tells them. And, and I think with In that, if you want to have a legitimate thing to say or something that's even worth saying, make yourself the time to make sure it's legitimate before making up something that's total nonsense and could very well get your butt kicked in the end. Yeah. But I think that's all about I have to say. How about you? Well, we've been kind of talking back and forth and I've been getting opinions about things. But in short, people should look at these kinds of situations if they were to put aside all of the labels that people are using from the media from the internet just from every single possible social website and just see it from a realistic standpoint as opposed to a labeling standpoint mm -hmm. and if people if people have the 
to have that mindset if they're open-minded enough to look at situations that don't have anything to do with gender or race or sexuality or any of those any of those labels then i believe that people can work more efficiently and communicate more effectively to the point where we will evolve better as a society i find it fun having to keep on unmuting myself <clears throat> <laughs> me too but i i think that's just about it though yeah that's that's pretty much it and actually that's what i was going to bring up and uh, as offensive as it may sound although it's completely within definition people need to quit being so darn retarded with what they believe they need to quit being so retarded in the mind make sure they have their facts before they spew a bunch of bs anywhere that's one way of putting it and then they're gonna look like a darn fool for doing so mm-hmm but let's make actually no that is a terrible way of a segue but uh, <laughs> Ready to shout it with me, or however you want to oh, yeah, the, say it the, with me? Listener's megaphone, right? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Listener's, Listener's megaphone. megaphone! Nearly Christmas edition. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. first up, we have... I'm trying to say that word. It what is? Oh, the oh that one. Oh, the ones yeah. for November, right? Yeah, I'm gonna search it up. Oh, I can say it if you want. I can read that one. Yeah, you you okay. read it, and I'll read uh, the last one. Okay, so this response was posted by somebody named. Oh, actually, Col I'll read the last two, maybe. Oh. Okay, okay, so this person named Bastardized Bearded A-Hole, we can call him Angelo for short. So he asks, yo, BN, it's a me, BB freaking A. What's a good dog? Anyway, homies, what are our y'all recommendations in talking to a crush? I'm a man in case you don't know, black to be exact. I mean, I'm nervous whenever I'm beside that girl and I'm losing out for words whenever beside her. It's just how can I tell my feelings for her without having an awkward situation? I know this isn't a love advice podcast, but I ain't got anybody to ask you how. Thanks. P.S. Do you all get black brother friends? Just curious, fellas. Okay. So, oh. I I'm going to start out by saying... I definitely recognize you, and I'm sorry we're getting to your advice so late again. But he's one of the people who's sent in contributions to the Shaft podcast, which is the podcast oh. I listen to often, well, watch oh. often. So that's where I know you're from, sir. Anyway, back to you, Thane. All right, so... Do you have any black or brother friends? Well, that's the that's the P.S. I'm getting to the first one. Um, so talking to a crush. Well, here's here's how I see it. When you have a crush, it usually means that you are at a much younger age, and you see somebody who you think that looks looks beautiful, and you want to kiss him or her, and just talk to each other for endless hours. I think that's that's a little different when you start starting to know about what your body goes through and forming relationships and such as he, my advice is that um aside from crush wise if you see somebody that you you are willing to want to get to know more you introduce yourself, you say, hello, my name is fill the blank. 
It's like I, you tell you who you are, just lay down some icebreakers for that one person and see if they are interested. Share your hobbies, your passions, tell them what you want to be when you grow up, just the sort of things that might catch their interest. And the thing is, is that in order to meet the one, as quoted by somebody who makes YouTube videos, you have to meet a whole bunch. And sometimes the first person that you meet might not be the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. So I guess it, it, it all depends, but you shouldn't be nervous when it comes to asking, like introducing yourself to girls that you like. I don't, I, I try to, I've had, I've had a couple of, of friends that I were, that were kind of close friends in high school, but that's because I spend a lot of time around with them doing things that they're, they love to do and me doing the same things that they are doing that I love. So I guess it's all a matter of taste and experience and previous um, interactions with each other. And I try to make things less awkward, but the thing is, I'm already an awkward person. I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndromes, and that's a, it's a disorder where um, the person has difficulty managing relationships, communicating effectively toward other people, and it's a wide spectrum of of how severe it is. It can be very, very mild to extremely severe, and I don't see myself on the extremely severe category because I am talking to you guys right now without freaking out or making it awkward. So uh, regarding to the PS, I did have a, a black friend. He was more of an Hispanic descent. I was younger and I used to hang around in New Jersey. There would always be this school that I went to over the summer and him and I, his name was Blake. We would play basketball with each other. We would play tennis and he was a good friend, but eventually I moved to New York and I never spoke of to him um, ever again. And I hope that he is living his life today and it would be great if I could also meet him. But Life goes on, and you move places, and stuff just happens. So, what about you, Blaze? I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely have some black friends, including one. He actually has a white-colored skin, but he was born of black and white parents, which we've been very, very good friends for a long time. And, uh, yeah, as for the girl advice, the love advice you're asking for, again, I apologize for that it's been so late for it. But, for one, I actually, I wanted to make a comment that one of the gym teachers at my school has the first name Blake, and he also does basketball and other sports. So yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. But back to the question. I honestly am really not the best one to ask for love advice. But other than be collective, make sure that you say what you want to say. Uh, if the girl says no. Probably it's best to back off, otherwise you might end up in a worse situation. And yeah. Oh, and don't do it via Facebook. Uh, I've never told a girl such a thing via Facebook. But obviously it would never turn out all too well. After all, you're behind a computer screen so yeah <laughs> but that's know. that's about all i can say yeah. but i wish you best of luck with whoever that girl is and i hope that things are going great for you sir and keep on watching the shaft but anyway <laughs> next up is kuya boing boing <laughs> <laughs> boing boing 
Hey, yes. What are your favorite movies in 2014? So, I guess I'll start with my mother, my friend Nathaniel, who's recently had the 19th birthday, and he's also my friend who's mixed race, or black, in other words. And um, we got to go see The Mocking Jay Part 1, which was a very excellent movie. And I got a feeling you're going to bring up Hunger Game movies too, because you did in the original version of this podcast, or previous version. Yeah. And otherwise, I've also gotten to see God's Not Dead in theaters with my grandmother, which, from critics, it didn't receive the most positive reviews at all, and from others, it didn't either, but... I think, and I find it quite interesting that um, it seems to be mostly the Christian audience that approves of the movie. Whether huh. it's because of just the whole, maybe because of so-called trying to convert people from being atheist. But of course, it also goes along the lines of, if you don't like that sort of movie, you don't watch it. Yeah. Let it for the people who do. There's even this guy who made a comment at the end of his review saying, ban this sick filth. And I mean, I enjoyed the movie. My grandmother really enjoyed the movie. Well, I also really enjoyed the movie. But even my grandmother, she's raised Catholic. And she thought the movie was very good. So I think that's definitely got to be something. And I'm part of the Catholic religion as well. And I found the movie very inspiring. And it actually kind of helped me with my own faith. But so far, those are my favorites of this year. Other than Dawn of the Dead, which... I did get to see that, even though it's an all four film. It came from 10 years ago. We've also gotten to see Shawshank Redemption and My Law Class, which was my first time watching that movie, as well as Cool Hand Luke, which is from the 60s, which was also in Law Class. And... I got a feeling I'm leaving out a movie. Oh, yes, and Gran Torino. That's the movie I was about to leave out. And I've also gotten to start into The Walking Dead. That's not a movie, but it's a dang great series. And it's mid-season finale, which we mm -hmm. dare not spoil for anyone here yeah. listening. It's huge. It was just brilliant. But anyway, what are your favorites? Well, I'm going to list the movies that I have seen this year that have released this year. So, first up was Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, which was basically a spin-off of the Paranormal Activity series. I thought it was actually really, really, really good. And the reason why is because it changed the pace when it was just about just people's moving the camera in the house it was more dynamic it was it took place in a setting that had a lot of spanish uh act, actors and actresses so that was that was really really well done the next one that i saw was um how to train your dragon 2 and that was basically a sequel to the first how to train your dragon such a great movie it's by dreamworks they make really 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 good movies um, and then the last one that I saw was Guardians of the Galaxy, and my goodness, that was so fantastic. If you guys are really a fan of, like, DC Comics and Marvel and such like that, you will so enjoy that, because I really, really did. One that I'm thinking about seeing is The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, but I heard that ended on a cliffhanger, so I might not see it. 
Um, I haven't seen. It was very much so a cliffhanger. Yeah, just like the second movie was. And, and end of which way, Guardians of the Galaxy, I have also heard very, very good things about. So, I am definitely anticipating seeing that movie sometime. Yeah, it was it was good. I'm I'm bound to see a lot more movies next year when they arrive on Netflix. So, we'll see. But I guess, anyway, let's get to the last and final question, which comes from ever so popular Super Mastodon, who's also an avid watcher of, avid viewer, avid, avid fan of the Shaft podcast and beating a dead horse and sorts, who says, as a gamer, which do you prefer more? Kickstarting or pre-ordering? Total Biscuit made a really good video about this, and he provides a link. Also, I think you guys should actually have this as a debate show. I think it would be awesome seeing your different opinions on some certain topics. Keep it up. So, basically, for those of you who don't know what Kickstarting is, Kickstarter... Kickstarting is a way to like submit the thing that you want to share with the community, whether it's a new invention or a new product or a new game or such as. And basically you create this as well as show perks that people can back for your pledge. So they can pledge a custom amount. They can also pledge um, a regular amount or select one of the perks. And there's a limited amount of time until the Kickstarter gets funded. And if it successfully does get funded, eventually, and I'm going to say that word again, eventually you will get the thing that you pledged for. There have been a couple of Kickstarters that have failed. One of them was for a game. It took two and a half years to finally make a decision, but they decided to cancel it. And it resulted in people not getting refunded any money whatsoever. But this also resulted in the situation that Kickstarter made where they added a new policy change where it says that – it said something along the lines of the pledger and or contributor who, who selects perks of the product that is promised by the owner must be obligated to deliver that product to the person who pledge or face – serious damages so that's one thing that they they introduced there as for all of you who are nerds out there pre-order it's basically when you buy a game in advance before its release sometimes these can be digital sometimes they can be retail in any cases like gamestop pre-ordering allows you to put five dollars down to reserve your own copy but in other times you don't have to do that if you pick it up within 48 hours and so that's also where, that's also a word that you've proven yourself to very much so dislike. Yeah, it's a it's it's a weird word, and I've been it I, it's it's at the point where people use it, and I don't under I don't really care about it anymore. It's just a word. As long as I understand the the statement they're trying to convey, that's what matters. So. Kickstarting versus pre-ordering, I think I would rather choose probably kickstarting because of the amount of perks that you can get. And basically, I think it's it's more worth kickstarting something that you really want and love and support than to just pre-order a game because... As with Steam, you could pre-order games, and if you change your mind before it releases onto the store, you can cancel it and get your money back because they've had so many issues with that that they decided to include it. But with Kickstarter, you just you just have the potential of receiving a lot more things than just what you're getting. But like I said, it all depends on the consumer. If people are willing to spend money pre-ordering a game to each his or her own if you're willing to spend money for a kickstarter project the owner is expected 
to give you the things that you pledge money for. And the only difference between when it comes to finalizing payments is that for pre-ordering, you pay in advance before the game comes out. Whereas with Kickstarters, you choose a perk of how much you're going to pay, and if the pledge, if and if the Kickstarter campaign is successful, then on the on the second where it it um it succeeds, if it succeeds, your account or card gets charged. But if it does not succeed, then no funds are taken out of your uh, savings or checking or whatever or your card if it fails. So I prefer Kickstarters. Yeah, and I guess the thing with Kickstarters is also you're getting to support the game, I, I think, more early in its development. And yeah. so far, the only Kickstarters I haven't really... So there's the Yogg's Cast Kickstarter that didn't turn out so well, but that's because someone took some money and ran from the rest of the company that was supposed to deliver so they could not deliver but that's because of one of their workers I think we said the person was an art designer or something something involved in the art portion of the project or there's the Kickstarter for Oculus Rift which the only problem I have with that is what happened after, which was Facebook buying yeah. Oculus Rift. Yeah, so I, dumb. That was such I, a waste of money. I'm just thankful I never spent a cent on that Kickstarter. That just disappointed me so much. And, I mean, the Oculus Rift still seems to be doing very well. And that Facebook has not screwed it up yet. But of course, that's yet. But it's still kicking. But I still highly, highly disapprove of them just taking more than double, if not probably more than quadruple, what they got from their Kickstarter, getting all that from Facebook. So then that brings in the wonder of, why didn't they just go to Facebook in the first place then? I, if they were going to get so much money from them. I don't know. And now because I think they spent so much money buying the Oculus Rift, Mark Zuckerberg, the person who who created Facebook, is no longer part of the top ten richest people in the world. Or, or was it America? I don't know. Yeah, I don't really. It, it's just, it. I, I don't know. It, I Maybe maybe it is a bit surprising, actually. But he he spent two two billion dollars to buy the Oculus Rift. What's going to happen? It says they have to sell a certain amount of of Oculus Rift kits or products, like by a certain date, if they are to start using it for Facebook. And I don't think that's going to happen. It might not work because there's so there are so many people who yet could afford it i mean it, what it costs development kit costs what at least 250 dollars maybe a little more than that and it's just i don't see it really succeeding when it comes to facebook i don't but as for kickstarters versus pre-ordering ver kickstarting versus pre-ordering something so far in my experience, I've only ever pre-ordered, which was very last minute getting a pre-order copy of Batman Arkham Origins, which I have not played yet thanks to the physical copy not installing all 16 gigs. Yeah. Not exactly sure why, but I got to download the rest 7 gigabytes through my Steam client, and then I also got a pre-order, which was also pretty much last minute, of Wolfenstein The New Order, and I was able to get the extra things with that, which were the TF2 items, as well as Doom Beta access, and... Whenever that so, is. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not exactly sure other than probably maybe some sort of reboot of Doom or something. I but don't even know. I guess it's to be released sometime or so. But so far, I've really had no problems at all with pre-ordering. Then can I do that all through Steam, pretty much? Steam well, is uh, well, PC uh, Master Race. Yeah, <laughs> and other than Arkham Origins, I actually got that through EB Games, but so far that's been my experience, and I have not supported any Kickstarters yet. I would most absolutely love to, though. So far, the closest thing I do to supporting a Kickstarter is Mr. Brent Copeland's Patreon page, which is basically an ongoing Kickstarter for if you're doing um, multiple projects. I mean, not multiple projects. If your project is an ongoing thing, as opposed to basically just one burst of money and you're all set for the rest of the way. So, myself, I I really can't say. It really just depends on what it is you're going for. But I, I think in the case of a Kickstarter, probably best to do some research. C kind of like the Minecraft scam conventions this year. Mm. It proves that... It's probably best to do some research before you do pay money for a Minecraft convention. Unless it's, however, ArcadiaCon or MineCon, because those have proven themselves. Well, MineCon's official, but ArcadiaCon's proven itself to be very trustworthy and well worth it. Speaking of cons, I'm going to VidCon next year. Mm hmm. Yeah, that takes place in July. 23rd to the 25th in Anaheim, California. And then there's my... supposed to be Play on Con yeah. next year, too. But I'm. If I can, maybe I'll go. I'll see if I can have enough money for Arcadia Con. I doubt it, though, but it, it, it's a nice idea. Only time but will tell. As for your other thing, we did talk about this before on the previous recording. Which was that the problem with Blaze on Nation being a debate show, and so far, I think I might be able to get Cheddarface back on for the 20th episode. But so far, we agree on far too many things. And I think <laughs> we've only yeah. agreed, I mean, disagreed on about one thing, which is the drone strikes issue. But I think that was hardly much of anything yeah it's 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 every once in a while we find something that we both disagree on but for the most part we have good intentions and similar mindsets in yeah, place we're we are far too like-minded i should have looked into that before i got you onto this show as a full co-host i should have made sure you were a way further left-wing person, which obviously you're not, I think. I want to be in the middle. I don't want to be in the right or the left. <laughs> I, I, I consider myself a bit further right, but probably not too, too far. Not exactly yeah. sure, though, but... That that's just the thing, though, is we, har we, in our experience with the show, we've hardly ever disagreed on something at all, and unless maybe next show, if we do get Cheddar Face on and there's a disagreement, then there you go. Yeah, rarely do we disagree on things, and it's kind of strange because you, it's ironic if you think about it. Usually, when we talk politics, you would expect. One person have one side, the other person have the other side. But in this case, we pretty much agree to every single political thing that has been happening in the world. Mm-hmm. And that's just that's, our that's, issue. That's uh, well, it's a it's not really an issue. It's more of like a, I guess. Um, oh no! Th this fate? is a very big issue here. We we gotta start disagreeing on stuff as of yeah. now. Oh great! <laughs> Problem is, is I don't really know how. 
Everyone should have entitlement. <laughs> Unemployment checks all around. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> well, I, again, apologize to pretty much all of you whose questions we've gotten to so late. And I have not seen that Total Biscuit video yet, but I do plan to. And I forgot to mention earlier that I got to tune into the Canadian Video Game Awards. And it's funny that Watch Dogs got Game of the Year, which clearly it did not deserve that, it. No, it didn't. There was and, too much and not enough quality for that game. And yeah. e even um, I tweeted it out that Child of Light having five awards and Watch Dogs only having two, excluding Game of the Year. I tweeted mm. out that Child of yeah. Light deserved it more. And guess what? The Child of Light official Twitter favorited my tweet. <laughs> oh, no, that's nice. <laughs> I mean, it should have. I mean, think about it. Watch Dogs is supposed to be one of those triple A title games, but with Ubisoft just being such, releasing such ridiculous ports like Assassin's Creed Unity, the whole yeah. oh, the whole companion and... app for the game just makes it a lot worse. It's still buggy. They had to release a 14 gigabyte patch just to clear up some issues. And it's just, it's so weird. But I think Ubisoft is really good at making open environments and open world, but they have to polish certain things before they release it. There was, a, there was an article about The Witcher 3 being delayed but according oh, to the developers, yeah. they said the game is actually done, but they are polishing it. So they are getting a whole bunch of, of QA testers to play through this game and point out any things that they think need polishing. And that is what I think developers should do. And I think that's what Ubisoft should do. But and... Ubisoft, they make great open worlds, but when it comes to functionality and and story driven characters they need to improve that a little bit and also what was it oh and something i did actually find kind of funny and i wasn't the only one in the uh twitch audience who thought so but with them giving batman arkham origins an award because this was for 2013 and 14 they gave it a war an award for best visuals and something else too and a couple people including myself brought up yeah probably mr victor lucas has something to do with that because he's well known to be a total geek for batman <laughs> i'm batman <laughs> <laughs> and, and I mean, when when they reviewed Batman Arkham City on reviews on the run, his colleague Scott C. Jones rated it a 9.5 out of 10. Guess what Mr. Victor Lucas rates it? A 10 out of 10? 12 out of 10. That that doesn't even work. You can't... That's not 100%. <laughs> if you divide 12 by 10, you get 1.2, which is 120%. That's not how it works. Yeah, and uh, I, why? And I, I guess on Wikipedia for the show, it still pretty much gets counted as a ten. But that's... I, I, I can remember when my oldest brother said that they should have rated Crisis higher, because I forget what it, what they rated it, but he said they should have rated it fifteen out of ten. And I'm thinking, no, but that goes over, and then, okay, maybe you were right, because they just rated Batman and Arkham City over yeah. 10. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't understand these, these grades. I used to get grades in college, so I had to do this paper on this. I did it at the last minute. I did it at 9 o'clock. I finished it in two hours. I go back to my class, and then I show it. I then get it back. It says I got 110 on it. How does that happen? Is there some sort of paradox that is happening in the world of numbers? Because it just it just makes no sense. I don't understand why that that would happen. Oh, it's so weird. And one of my friends, I think this yeah, this would have been in grade nine, 
he got, I think, about 107% in our French class, and that just completely surprised me. I mean, well, then again, our teacher did give bonus marks, so I believe that would have been why. But it's pretty funny that on the marks program that the school board uses, which I forget what it's called exactly, but that it would actually have that sort of an output. But anyway, we got to go for bed, or at least yep. I do. Yep, we have, we have to prepare for Christmas Eve because Santa Claus is coming to town. Exactly. Ho, ho, also, ho. Also Steam sales. But if you're watching this <laughs> a month in the future, then you're probably not exactly... <laughs> yeah, you're Steam, out of time. The Steam, the Steam sale runs until, I think, the 2nd of January, yep. uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're wa if you're listening or watching this and it's already past that time, then you missed the sale. But that's okay because there will be a Valentine's Day sale. Mm -hmm. And get and some stuff for your loved ones, including you, Angelo. Also, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite the raunchy reference, but okay. Yeah. So where can people reach you? All right, so... If you want to reach me, I can be reached along with my Twitter handle at the thing twenty ten. That's T H E T H I N G and twenty ten. You can also look up my YouTube channel, Splinter Cell God or SC God for short. I will be uploading a lot more videos and a lot more content because I am getting a new gaming computer, possibly to possibly tomorrow or the day after. I have to set it up. Um, and yeah, that's it. I just wanted to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Festivus, and such as. And if you are watching this in the new year or before, I want to wish you all to have a Happy New Year in 2015. We will see where Episode 20 will happen. If it happens before the new year, we'll let you guys know. If not, again, Happy New Year 2015 is almost <laughs> here. You should just... Bring out the 2015 glasses and the cups and the Gone with the Wind attire because that movie has been out for 75 years. And that's all I got to say. <laughs> oh, my. And you can find me at JBJBlaze on Twitter as well as my YouTube, JBJBlaze. And hopefully I can get the video versions of this episode up on both my YouTube and Blaze on Asian TV, which is Blaze on Asian. And you can also follow the show at Blaze on Asian, as well as the Steam community, the Flippin' Awesome, all one word. And all lowercase. Not sure if lowercase matters, though. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Have a very good night. Have a very Merry Christmas. And we should get be able to get to this before then. But... Happy New Year, and have a safe rest of the year 2014. Bye-bye. See ya. What do you mean you want more, or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonnation.tk for more articles and show notes, to flippinawesome.engine.com slash bmp for show notes, and check out the show on Stitcher at bit.ly slash bmp stitcher. Have a good night, everybody! Also, noticing the time, unfortunately, I won't be able to get any of these videos which I did plan on getting released tonight. So, bye-bye.